How big is your schlong? Oh, it's <laughs> the hand motion. That's what gets me every time. This is like my favorite ending to any video. Yeah. This is Kelly Wakasa and his editor, Wyatt Dobson. Kelly and Wyatt have managed to modernize the oldest YouTube genre. Smart oh, Get gut! The vlog. Well, of course, the obvious question is, what are they doing differently? That was a moment where I'm like, I don't want to cut for the retention. Like, I just want it to be the story that actually happened. I'm also having character growth while editing this. And it is the feeling that I do get across all of your videos. Memory. Everything that you're doing is kind of the intention is to capture a memory, capture a moment, like living in the present sort of thing. How are you guys managing to capture that? You know, ever since Wyatt and I started making videos together, I just like, why? Like, I like it like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> The Editing Podcast is brought to you by Riverside. It is the best remote video recording tool for podcasts. You can find out more about them later. You guys are helping redefine and also expand the vlogging space on YouTube. But let's find out how you guys are doing that by breaking down one of your videos. The world's tallest man. I saw him for the first time when I was 10 years old. That whole spot right there where it's like the, the click, click, click. The world's tallest man. That was all blank when I sent it to Kelly because I was like, I don't know what we should put here. I feel like it needs to be some sort of grand shot of him or something, but I couldn't yeah. find one online that really worked. I knew my first words were the world's tallest man. I was like, okay, I'm just going to cut exactly to that. And then I just kind of match cut it. The world's tallest man. The music choice was, I was very deliberate with it because I listened to Kelly's intro first. I wanted to find a song that he would say something and then the music would hit. And then the, mm. he would say something, music would hit. So that's why it's like the dun, dun. I saw him for the first time when I was 10 years old. In the Guinness World Record book. And then I found page 73. It kind of also makes it sort of like magical in a way. I wanted to set Sultan up like, so he almost was like a spectacle or like a myth. Sort of felt like a legend almost. Like he wasn't necessarily real. Because that's kind of what Kelly talks about in the intro as well. So I kind of wanted to make it feel otherworldly. Why would you choose to go for the spectacle aspect of him first? It was rooted in the story decision I made because I wanted it to be not only highlighting Sultan, but also I wanted the audience to be in Kelly's perspective, in Kelly's shoes. Because I think a lot of us hear about this guy, but I wanted the journey to also be Kelly discovering like, you know what, he's not just this spectacle. He's not just this like being like legend. He is a person deep down. And that's what Kelly sort of realizes throughout the story. I mean, I think the story really was just like genuinely how I felt. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't know him. He's only a piece of paper, like in, you know, in my mind. And then I feel like also on YouTube, you need to like satisfy the viewer like right away. Yeah. And I knew this had like more viral potential. So I was like, of course, we're going to just show him right yeah. in the beginning. And then I found page 73. I laid my eyes on Sultan Kosan. I wanted to make sure, uh, like, to highlight. So the, I mean, it's it's more so just so it's easy on the eyes. You know, when the viewer is watching it, it's just it reads right there. So it's they're not distracted by all the other words. This may be in your instinct, but I'm getting a lot of uh, eye tracing here. It's interesting how much stays in the exact same center. So it looks like this might have been an instinct rather than a conscious choice, and I love it when this happens. The world's tallest man. I saw him for the first time when I was ten years old. The See, so much is still in the middle. And then I found page 73. Where I laid it my must be a little subconscious. I really do enjoy like very symmetrical frame shots, sort of yeah. uh, like Wes Anderson type. Yes. So maybe it is subconscious that I try to do that kind of stuff in the edit. Now I want to find out for myself because I still have that question. Also, what is it like being the world's tallest man? Oh, what does I like do that. Like that. Little kiss sound effect. The little kiss sound effect. Like you didn't have to, but why? Like why why was that so important for you guys? I I try I'll do a pass of just sound design after the video's done and I try to enhance a lot of the footage with sound, especially when I'm like pulling footage from YouTube that's not ours. I'll have to remove the sound cuz maybe there's too loud of music or I don't like the audio, so I'll go in and I'll fill in my own sound effects. Is he absolutely tired of people asking him how tall he is? Probably. So I need to find him. Honestly, I feel like there was no chance I could get a hold of someone like this. Why would he Was this filmed after you'd like filmed the whole video? 
video. This was yeah. after, yeah. The whole intro, pretty all these shots you're seeing is like a shot list that I kind of like texted Kelly. I was like, hey, we kind of roughly need these sort of shots. And I think it's funny, like I feel like this video, we put a lot of our tricks in one video. Like we've done these match cuts like a million times. Same with this. It's just like cutting quick to the beat. I feel like we just pulled out a ton of tricks on this yeah. video knowing it's a big video. So after going down the rabbit hole of online search, I found his manager's Instagram and I DM'd him. And then he replied. And then I replied back and it worked. It was really, really fast, kind of very aggressive. And then they had that little pause. And what is it, what is it for you in terms of doing those types of performances? I think that's just kind of like natural. Like I don't really think about doing that or hey, it's going to like cut for a comedic moment. I think that's something that like when Wyatt gives me an edit, a lot of times it's like, that's what I'll cut in or like extend a clip. That's why I think we work so well together is because we get like multiple eyes on a project. Okay, there's a signature thing there. <laughs> Can you tell us the origin story of that? I knew like one hand dance move, which is like, like that. <laughs> and so then I was like, oh, I just, I don't know how long ago, like years ago, I would do that same mask, just like throw it at the camera. And people always liked it. So I even think like here, we could have gone straight into the world's tallest man. And I remember people telling me like, you should just cut it straight to the world's tallest man. I mean, I, we had this I, conversation. I even asked you that. I said, because you you preface it in the brief. You're like, no, I want the travel to be long. And I was like, are you sure we shouldn't like make it like 30 seconds max and just go straight into the first day? And he goes, no, I really want to highlight the travel there. And I was like, okay. So I left it long. I'm like, I'm not really, I feel like that was a moment where I'm like, I don't want to cut for the retention. Like I just want it to be the story that actually happened. It was really hard for us to go to Turkey. So I was like, I'm just going to leave it in. Especially for the viewer that like doesn't know me. If I just show them the world's tallest man, like they don't care about me. So I had to like give him, give the viewer something like, oh, this is like part of his journey, I guess. Do you know what's going on in Syria, right? No. The civil it, war. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Landmines, gotcha. a lot of explosions, a lot of gunfight. And the way they make their money to find what they do is also kidnapping. Kidnapping. Okay. Why not nice kidnap group? an American? Whoa, dude, this trip just went up a notch. Now I'm scared. <laughs> I was stuck on that that part for like a good, I, over like a day. Cause there were, that whole conversation was what? Maybe like 15 minutes long. Oh wow. It was long. Yeah. I and you, like, I gave it to me. We oh, hopped on, yeah, we hopped on a discord call and I was like, I shared my screen. I'm like, dude, how should we cut this down? And I think I had had it cut down to like a minute at that point. And he's like, I'll just cut this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. I highlight all of them, delete, and it worked. Interesting Murdia Darlings moment then, because I think it's a tense moment. And so you kind of wanted us to feel it, but actually maybe it's just simply highlighting the emotion for that beat, that feeling, the oh shit moment. That was the other thing is we wanted to set up a sort of like tension or sort of like fear or something that the audience should maybe be worried for Kelly. So there's that extra bit of tension in there. So I think that was a great, like it was great to keep it in. I would imagine a lot of editors would make the mistake in putting in attention music, you know, dun -dun 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 -dun, and then and like, and then it's like, I hate that. And then some drums <laughs> sort of shit. They're kind of like telling me how to feel. But the fact that you didn't was actually really important that you did that. Like, like fuck the filmmaking, drop it all. This is a real moment. One of my favorite techniques is is silence. And yeah. I think having silence will create tension. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's like the choice there for cutting the music. Perfect example of less is more. We didn't make it. I don't know if the world's tallest man can reschedule. Like we had a date in mind. I already like messaged his manager. Haven't heard anything. I'm just like, damn, we come all this way, spent all this money and got nothing. Now this video gets interesting. That sequence was, uh, that was reversed. So right. Kelly was talking that the clip where he's walking this way and he's explaining everything that happened second. You were talking in a different, like that one where you go, now this gets interesting. And I was like, that clip I think belongs at the end. Cause I like to, I, ca I call them transitional phrases. I like using like a transitional phrase to go back into a montage or mm. to motivate a cut or something like that. I like putting that at the end. Cause it kind of leads you back into the montage, into the adventure again. How would you categorize a transitional phrase? Like, how do you look for that in an edit? I've thought about this. I think it's normally when someone will be like, let's go do this, I think is like the most broad example where, but like there's, there's other ones where it's sort of like, it's hinting. Open-ended. Open-ended, yeah. 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 I read something recently that was really, really interesting. It was, uh, I think it was from a Star Wars editor. She said, make sure scenes end with a comma, not a full stop. That's, yeah, that's kind of, that's exactly what I think of like as like a transitional phrase. I wouldn't think of it to say it like that, but that's yeah. a great way to put it. So Riverside's been partnered with us for almost a year now, and we wouldn't be able to create this without them. We use it to record every remote interview for our show. It's an absolute necessity. It's been one of our most reliable tools for our workflow. This is online software that records your screen, your camera, 
and audio all separately and uploads it to the cloud. That means you can end up with multiple files that you can edit separately, giving you full creative control in the edit. It also doesn't give you bad recording quality like other video call softwares do. It gives you 4K footage. It looks professional as frick. Also, if your connection drops during the interview, it doesn't matter because Riverside records locally, so no footage will ever get lost. More than just recording, Riverside has amazing post-production tools as well to help you create your show as fast as possible. Riverside generates AI transcriptions, which you can use to then do text-based editing on your show. And if you want to introduce the guest, you can pop your script in a teleprompter and off you go. And lastly, you can use magic clips. Basically, you can automatically create shorts from your long form show right in Riverside with the click of a button. You can do everything from pressing record to pressing publish right in Riverside. You can sign up to Riverside for free and use the code editing podcast for 20% off the paid version. Back to the conversation. Today is the day. I'm excited. I'm nervous. We came so far to make this happen. We're getting picked up by Sultan's manager. Gonna drive an hour to meet up with Sultan and begin our day. Let's do it. There's another transitional phrase like, let's do it. I purposely made the music here. So I was chopping up the music and I wanted like, I think like I wanted the, that part of the music where the, the I don't know what string or what instrument comes in there, but where the beat switches, I wanted that to come in as the travel montage progresses. So I keep picking like new parts of the song. So it feels like the travel is progressing until Kelly reaches Sultan's house. It's really important doing that when the locations are kind of tricky to sometimes gauge where we are in, in the actual journey, using the music to then uh, signal to us the, the actual progression. And so, yeah, there's an escalation of music there. It's such a simple touch, but really effective. I love it. I thought it was interesting that you didn't build to like a reveal when you first see him in person. I think I don't like to like play up things that don't need like added drama. And I kind of just like the rawness of Kelly just meeting him. And I kind <clears> of, <throat> I, I think of Kelly almost as like, I, I want the viewer to be in Kelly's shoes or Kelly's eyes. Like I want them to be in the driver's seat. So I want them to experience what Kelly's experiencing. And I think the best way to do that is through like raw, natural editing for the most part. Obviously I do like sometimes fun transitions, but for the most part, yeah, that was the, that's the reasoning there. I feel like also like it's not a perfect video. So it's like, there's many things that we still can do a lot better. 100%. Mm, like, I, you know, even looking back, I was nervous during that moment. We didn't really capitalize on that moment, but we also might not have filmed enough even to capitalize on that. So like, I mean, in a different world, we totally could have had a, oh my God, this is the moment, you know, narration type thing. But hey, we just got to get it out. Thank you for having us here. You're welcome, thank you very much. Your English is so good. I thought it- I am English, I love America. <laughs> America beautiful, America nice. You know, your hands, when I felt them, were just- Big, big hands, sorry. Big, big hands. So not only is Sultan the- I remember during this part, when I watched it back or whatever, it was very raw, like we were just talking. So like that narration right there, it's kind of like talking about the stats a little bit more that we didn't know or like the viewer didn't know. And easy way to break up kind of boring A-roll. It's just, you know, little narration add a little bit more to what's happening. And I was also blown away by his parents who are both shorter than me at 5'11". My father. I love this room, like all carpet. This whole scene was the longest of the video. This, there was like, I think it was like two hours of him just being here and then going into his room. But it was important for me to highlight the moments that I felt like made him seem the most human-like. Like mm -hmm. nothing like too crazy. Like I wanted, like Kelly even mentioned, like, he's like, I want the part where he says, I love America and I love Starbucks. Cause I, and I was like, those are great things to put in. Cause they, they humanize him more, you know? So it, I was always looking for moments like that in this video to cut in. When you get overwhelmed of like, yeah, two hours of footage, actually setting a rule for what you're looking for. Like this is actually one on one to get out of this footage, having that intent. I think kind of then it helps you shave off a lot of these things. Okay, this is not attributing towards the rule I want for this scene. Let's cut it out. One of the things that I find really, really interesting in this video was you introduce them as a spectacle, uh, but then straight away started setting the rules of like, actually, this guy's a human. And so we started seeing those human experiences, like genuine, wholesome, beautiful moments between you and Selton. And then they kind of then beca became this sort of like audience call out, I would say, when in between all these wholesome moments, we cut to these mini sequences of everyone else still with their phones out. And you keep throwing those, sneaking those in at us. 
And for me, it was, I felt a little bit called out as well. Like, yeah, this like th this isn't just some spectacle thing for us to just like observe like, like he's like an animal in a zoo. This is still uh, like a human person. Just the way that you sprinkled in all of those moments of, uh, of like people just being obsessed by just simply documenting him. How important was that for you to guys to get? I feel like before we started the video, I knew going into it, this is like what I can bring to the table. I was looking at a lot of other videos that had been made and it's like five minutes interview just showing like all of his stats. And so I think that was our edge in this video. Like I knew he was going to be a spectacle and I knew his life was not as easy or as it seems or just like him just chilling in his house being tall. And I remember like being there and being like, yo, yo, telling our, our filmer Colt, like, yo, can you grab that? Can you grab that shot? Or like, cause that's what really was happening. And that's, you know, something that I knew that we wanted to capitalize on. Yeah. We wanted to show him for who he is and not who the media kind of portrays him as. Mm -hmm. That was a, the big reason in the story for me cutting in all of the photos is mm -hmm. because I really wanted to show like how much people just see him as like a, oh my God, you're tall. Let me get a picture. But they don't care about who he is. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to have the audience care about who he is. So how did you do that practically when you're just doing the edit? and you're just having that in the back of your mind, what choices did you make that led you to that? I think it was having, I mean, Kelly's intro set it up very nicely for me, which is like, he's saying like, is he even real? Is uh, like, I've only seen him in books. It sets up Kelly to also be in the same boat as everyone else is, I think, when we hear about like world record holders like this. Throughout the video, you start to see like, not only who he is as a person, like I said earlier, like I, I'm, I wanted to really like highlight just all of the personal moments with him. And then you see all of the other people that aren't informed of these things coming in and taking the photos. And it's like, well, actually, I kind of feel for you now as a person. And that was something I went through personally while I was editing it. I didn't have the idea of like the B plot until I think like when Kelly reached the house, I was I was uh, thinking, I'm like, there needs to be more of a, a story to this. Mm. And I, that's what I sort of came up with. I was like, wait, I'm realizing now that I'm also thinking in the same way as these people and I'm seeing all this photo footage and I'm like, I need to capitalize this and highlight it because mm. I'm also having character growth while editing this, like character development while editing it. You could tell Sultan is a competitor. He was animated with his expressions. I wanted to earn his respect, but I knew I was on the chopping block. Yeah, I love that bit. <laughs> I could tell that you had that footage and then went, Kelly, I need to record this VR. I remember no, it, actually that was you added that in. There was I, no was, narration. There was no narration these. there. But oh really? This yeah. is all me cutting it, but Kelly added the narration after the fact. I feel like I have a chance to win. I started feeling out the game. They most certainly saw me as no threat as we picked up some of our last dominoes. But like Sultan, I am also a competitor. And just like that, the game was over. I win. I win? You win. Yes, you win. Ha 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 Well, first of all, shout out Colt because the shots are just, oh, they're so good. They're like, I was spoiled with the amount of shots I had to work with. There was a big long clip. You played like six games during that. It was that. long. Oh, it was like a good 40 minute clip maybe. Wow. So my, I almost had to tell a mini story in, in this scene, which was like, I wanted it just to, play like one game happened. Yeah. So I'm finding all of these moments where Kelly's like mentioning stuff about the game or like, oh, I'm kind of understanding it. I moved this piece here. Like all of the the moments I cut in where he's talking were important me, for me to cut in. So as the game is progressing or what should be one game is progressing, it feels like Kelly's getting the hang of it. And then by the end, he ends up winning. So I wanted it to slowly but surely feel like he was picking up the game or like picking up how to play the game as it was happening. And I tried to make it feel as natural as possible, even though it was like so many takes of- We lied. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, that's crazy. That is way harder than it looks. Yeah. Like it looks super easy, but that discipline of taking like six different games and trying to get all the right sound bites in the right order and choose the right B-roll to make yeah. it feel like one. This that's is a hard. very common thing that we do. Yeah. Where it's like we have, you know, an excess of footage. We don't really shoot like just what we need, which is good and bad, sometimes bad. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> we're, a lot of times we go back and forth and, you know, we're like struggling to figure out an edit yes. uh, because we have so much footage and we have to murder our darlings. But yeah, in this one, we're just going to grab the best moments. And that's why we were able to get these great moments was because we were filming 45 minutes straight. That being said, I still had one dying question I needed to ask him before we said our final goodbye. How big is your schlong? Oh! <laughs> this is like my favorite ending to any video. Dude, for, for me, it's the hand motion. That's what gets me every time. It's just the... <laughs> yeah. I remember like knowing, okay, this 
this needs to be epic. And also I knew I brought this glass bottle all the way to Turkey knowing I'm going to ask him this. And I <laughs> built up the courage at the very end of the day, like, okay, I'm going to ask him now. Mm. And he definitely just did not understand. One of my favorite sort of subtle cuts, I would say in this, because you're saying like, I want to adjust like the elephant in the room. But then what you then do is then you then cut to a phallic shaped sort of a uh, piece of food and it's like, yeah, you're, just, you're very much acknowledging the joke there. Wait, I, that's I not even intentional. Yeah, that's not intentional. I still had one dying question. I <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> that you pointed that out. That is literally crazy. I swear to God that I did not intend for that. I was just putting the V-roll there. That's hilarious though. I did not realize that that time it's like, crazy, ta like matches up so well. A quick tangent on the conversation, but there is this music track I want to show you that Wyatt used in some of Kelly videos. Are you ready to go? What? But that's a mainstream track. How is Kelly Wakasa able to use a mainstream track from Bazzi? Or this mainstream track from Don Tolliver? Hey, yeah, we already know we're heading towards the answer. You can get these mainstream tracks with Licked. Licked is the music platform that gives creators access to the world's biggest artists. You can license the biggest and best tracks from their massive library of over 1 million songs. Viral hits like Delhi by Ice Spice. Or classics like Yellow by Coldplay. Or you can express your positive masculinity and be Kenneth with the Barbie soundtrack. For us, this is super important. We often use soundtracks in mainstream music in our show's content, but that would then mean that we would sacrifice ad revenue and discoverability. A mainstream needle drop like that could be the very thing you need to get that spike in retention and get your content seen by more people. Go check out Licked and get 50% off your first mainstream track and 14 days of free stock music via the link in the description. Now let's get back to the chat. There was one thing that you said that I found really, really fascinating and it is the feeling that I do get across all of your videos and it is memory. Like it feels like all of this, everything that you're doing is kind of the intention is to capture a memory, capture a moment, like living in the present sort of thing. And these videos sort of have this beautiful sort of reflection, uh, looking back while like enjoying that moment sort of feeling. And how are you guys managing to capture that? I feel like it's a feeling thing and something that I just, hey, this is just the way I've made videos so long and that's what I like. And I think that, you know, ever since Wyatt and I started making videos together, I was just like, why? Like, I like it like this. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I just, I've learned over time. Just like we've, uh, we just have that chemistry now where it's like, I just know what Kelly wants. And I think we have like, uh, there's obviously like some differences, of course, like in our editing. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I think when it comes down to it, like, I know what you want. And I'll I, like, I think I have a pretty good like instinct of like, okay, this is what our videos look like now. So like, it's way different than when we first started. And that's why we, I think we go back and forth. Like, that's why, why it will send me a timeline. We'll like literally like talk about it. And that's why we get a, I think, a different style of video too, is because you get to hear from my authentic voice where I think a lot of creators don't touch the video, which I think leads to not having that, like these funny moments that only me being there could wide even understand, you yeah, know? Yeah, hundred percent. Working together for so long that I also understand like, if I don't tell Wyatt, how can I expect him to do something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I have gotten many timelines back just cause I'm not that much of a planner and telling like why, like, oh, I want it cut like this. That is cut just completely different than what I imagined. Mm -hmm. And that's just because I, I'm not saying anything. So then I can't really be mad. You know, like, I yeah, feel like you'll, you've said that before. you'll see, like, you'll send me a timeline and then it'll go up on YouTube. It'll be completely different. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what, what happened? What, like, I like this cut. And you, like, like, why will text me? He's like, are you, is everything okay? Like, were you, <laughs> you know, were you upset at me or something? And I think that's just because we just cannot get on the same page perfectly. Yeah. But there are certain videos, like, I think the world's tallest man is like one of Wyatt's best videos mm -hmm. and that we saw like pretty much eye to eye. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it'll ever be like, perfect because of course like i mean it's two different people collaborating on something like we're never going to yeah. see a hundred percent like uh, there's always going to be things where it's like well you want it done this way but i think it's better done another way do you ever send like a brief to wyatt kelly yeah yeah no, what does that look like it's usually just like a notion doc that's like pretty much an outline of the video like i'm just cutting together specific things and writing it down for wyatt just to remember 
And I feel like sometimes like you just look at it once and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, <laughs> there, there's, I think like sometimes I will, if I have a, I have a good, like if we've done a call, I'll be like, I already kind of know. But if yeah. I really need to refer back to something, I will. Um, another thing Kelly will do, I think this is more so we developed this over time is because I look at timelines, I think differently than you, maybe a little bit, which is like, I view them as like very specific scenes. So then I think Kelly has started, Kelly's started adopting, like he'll put each scene for me. He's like, this is a scene, this is a scene. And we just kind of go down the list, like intro and then blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm like, if you want to call it a scene, just call it a scene, man. (laughs) (laughs) What I'm getting out of all this is, it's just simply communication. Yeah. Just by simply you listing the scenes and uh, and just by giving him just that context already helps why it's so much more than collaboration. And even that does come down to just the way that you write it, you still create a tone, you also create a feeling, you also describe what excites you. Just that little bit of context just gives sharing your perspective, probably gives why it's so much more to work with straight away rather than uh, giving all of the footage and then just hoping for the best. You definitely asked me for briefs before. Like if I'm oh, sometimes yeah. like, here's it, you're like, please give me yeah, a brief. Can you send me something? <laughs> yeah, like. I think it's, it's really helpful. I think it's good for like it, like if you're an editor out there, like try to get a brief from your creator. I think I think communication is, is very key, especially when when collaborating. Yeah. So why, as far as a brief, what would you want to be on it? What kind of questions would you ask as an editor to try to get the full information? I I do look for like what moments are you like dead set on them being in the video? Like yeah. if you have one scene that you like, I do not want this cut. Like, please let me know any of those scenes so I don't cut them like by mistake. Sometimes just like suggestions of like, oh, maybe I would like this scene to look like this. I know that's kind of vague, but stuff like that. So what would be like the common feedback notes and what are like the common praising notes? I think whenever you do something, you know, you do something creative, like let's say like the fighting video at the end, you really like did a end montage that was not planned, but it worked, I thought beautifully. I wasn't nervous. I was excited. And I remember when when you sent me that ending, I was like, this Frank like was sick that I did awesome. not originally think of. I think a lot of times we'll get a timeline that's like back that's nor- like you know more just like normal. But I remember specifically that montage like, whoa, hey, yo, you kind of doing this right now. I think in, in our Wyatt. call, <laughs> thanks. I think in our call, you originally were like, at first I was like, why is it stopping? Like, and, uh, and then you're like, oh, this is cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's dude, I found that song. I was like, oh, this is so perfect. Just slow it down. I do remember in that boxing video, it, you kind of go in for that sort of big epic style. You also bring in that other sort of like violin classical music, but for the big fight at the end, you, uh, I think you made it a lot more smaller and intimate but actually kind of then made it a lot more epic because of that music choice going into the slow motion. Yeah. You could have just shown that fight again, like, oh, because everything else was in normal motion, but that was like the one that was in slow motion. Mm-hmm. I just like that sort of difference between it all. Like I said earlier, like I, I really like silence and and putting people in Kelly's perspective a lot. So when it came to the fight, I wanted the silence to sort of add the tension of like, oh my God, you're going, he's going into a fight. Like also having that that song in the background, it's it's subtle enough, but it's also beautiful and it's sort of poetic in a way that I just, I loved how it all just like blended together really yeah. nicely. There's something so beautiful in putting something, a beautiful track against chaos. And just those two, and we love this, contrast creates focus and just putting those two things that shouldn't work, but you put those two together and because they shouldn't work, they do work. I've noticed that, especially in that video, there's just a lot of contrast. There's lots of fast moments, slow moments, just you're switching it up all the time. Why do you do that? I think it's like just what I like. And I think even sometimes when we have these conversations, I'm not thinking that much when I'm editing. And it's just like, that's, that's sometimes when it's hard even explaining what we're doing, where it's more so like this is a feeling thing. And, and sometimes that's even hard when we go back and forth about like an edit. It's like, huh, well, why why did I change it? Like, I don't know. Like, I just liked it that way. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, the music that we choose. I mean, it's pretty much based on feeling. And if it fits, you put it down there and you're like, mm, this doesn't fit at all. Yeah, I do that a lot. I'll just throw like four or five songs under it. I'm like, which one do I like the best? And I'm yeah. like, oh, I, oh, I picked that one. It sounds good. I think it's really easy for me when we watch back like a footage or like when Wyatt sends me the the draft or whatever we're working on. It's like the music, it didn't match. Like we need to change it. We need to extend these clips to make it like feel in that moment. And that's something that I don't, why why do we do it? I don't know. How long have you guys been working together? Like three years? I think you just hit three years, yeah. So how did it it all start? How'd you guys meet? When I moved to Arizona, I was attending University of Arizona in Tucson. And then 
on the first day of school, I needed someone to help me film. And then I had put out on my Instagram story, hey, looking for someone to help. And then I think your friend sent that yeah, that so story to you, right? My one of my friends is a fan of his, and I had I had no idea who you were. And uh, I at this point, uh, I had been in college for a few years. I had been like sort of a struggling videographer editor, just trying to get work in like in Tucson, just trying to to edit and um, or just trying to just to make content. And I had I think sent probably over like three to four thousand DMs to people just being like, can I work for you for free? Can I work for you for free? When I got that story sent to me, I think I had actually already DM'd you another time, not even knowing who you were. So we had already had DMs previous to that. I resent it and I was like, or I sent like, oh yeah, like let's do it. And you got back to me at like midnight and you're like, yeah, can you film in the morning or like early afternoon? I'm yeah. like, can you bring a gimbal? I'm like, Sure, let's do it. And didn't then use the gimbal. Did not use the gimbal. <laughs> no. I still have yet to use a gimbal. <laughs> I started filming and then slowly but surely yeah. got onboarded into the editing and now we're now we're here. So why why did you send so many DMs? I just wanted I want I was so hungry for work. I just wanted to be making videos for a living and I wanted to find someone that could like take a shot on me that would just Were you about to graduate? Uh or? I had like two years left, but I probably oh, wouldn't so have, I probably wouldn't have graduated. I was too busy focused on making videos. So Wow. Yeah. That's such a testament to the perseverance that you have to make videos. I think that's so inspiring. It's uh it's I love it. I love it at the end of the day. And I think it's it's something that I just want to do. And I've always wanted to do it since I was a kid. I like to define your content as uh, as vlogging, but also but what you guys are doing in terms of production quality, I would also call it documentary as well. How has the history of YouTube led you towards this moment where you are making your content? I feel like just staying true to what I enjoy watching and filming is that even from the very beginning, I knew what I liked. I had creators that I liked their style and my style is pretty much just like a combo of a bunch of people. Who are they? I would say Chris Chan is like my number one inspiration for my videos, yeah. which is like, he's like a skateboard vlogger. Mm. And I just wanted to document adventures with a cameraman. And then I think over the years, I realized telling a story would make that more compelling. Mm. And that skateboarding my original niche just couldn't grow as big as just being a, like a normal entertainer. I remember specifically writing down on a piece of paper, like I'm going to take the best qualities of every top YouTuber and put it together. And not that I was really successful in it, I would say, but that's what I thought like, oh, this is, this is a recipe for success. I was like, David Dobrik quick. Like it's so entertaining. And I was like, Emma Chamberlain relatability. And then Casey Neistat storytelling. And I was like, I'm just going to put it all together. Then I was like, okay, I'm going to just do that and use it as like a rubric. But really did I accomplish it? I don't know. And nowadays I really just, just create, like, I don't, I don't really think about it as much. And when I look in, I feel like is when the videos are actually like the most passionate and the ones that are the most unique. All three of those were good foundations for you. And then once that was a good source of inspiration, I think it then got to a point when you can kind of like abandon inspiration because you were then able to understand yourself a lot more. There was definitely a moment where I felt like, oh, I'm actually creating like a style. Like people were like, oh, I love your style. And I was like, style, like, I'm just, I'm just a stolen style. It's like, I'm not, yeah. a, I'm not a style. And that's why I think it's still important that like even creators like still edit videos. Like that's really where the style comes in. I feel like the last two videos, cause we've been working on like bigger projects. Like I just edited them. I just edited the, the video. And then I feel like it helps me remember like, okay, this is like, this is the origin. Like, don't forget where you came from and like what really at the base of a YouTuber is, at least for me was, is editing. And that's why I feel like, you know, finding wide and someone that's just as passionate was so important. I'm curious about what projects fulfill you the most. Like what projects are like, frick, that was awesome. That's what we were meant to do. And, and how are you like continuing to do that? It's definitely the things that I've wanted for a long time. Those are the projects that I like to do and continue to do. And I think even with the world's tallest man, or we just shot one with the world's shortest lady, all I ever want to do was have enough money that I could do YouTube videos and travel and go on these crazy adventures and hopefully bring friends. A video that we have coming up, I'm looking at the timeline, like I was looking at today, this is the stupidest investment of my time ever. <laughs> we shot a road trip movie that's gonna be like an hour long that wow. probably is gonna be a 10 out of 10. Like I actually guarantee it, but it's just like something inside me was like, I wanna make a movie. Like I want to just have that under my belt, like. I did that and 
it's something I always want to do. Grab a bunch of friends, drive into blue bus and just have fun. So why do you listen to that? Because I feel like so many people are afraid to do that. I don't know why I listen to it. I think, I think ultimately I'm not that business driven and money doesn't drive me that much. If you know, know me personally, like I, I'm kind of like, whatever, I just want to make like good content, like something that's fun that I can look back on or someone can enjoy. And that, you know, making more money by maximizing and have, instead of just Wyatt here, having 20 editors, you know, would actually be probably better. Like we'd <laughs> probably, you know, we pump out more content and everything, but really I just like, I look inside for what we should do for the channel. Really. I think I'm, I'm fortunate too, that I feel like no matter what happens, I'll be okay. Or at least have that confidence in me that even if I, you know, we're technically, we haven't posted in a month, like we're still editing this damn movie. And for like two, two months now, two, wow. like since like end of May. Oh my gosh. The amount of hours that Wyatt and I have put into this video is just <laughs> ridiculous. Eight like, hours a day, five days a week for two months. I think it's awesome that you are willing to just put yourself through that process and just learn and be like, okay, I've never edited a movie before. Why? And you're just like, Let's do it. When I got to New York before the the filming of it, Kelly's like, oh yeah, by the way, it's going to be like, we're just shooting every day. It's going to be, we're doing like a movie. And I was like, oh, okay, let's just, <laughs> let's just do it. I, like, I, like, I didn't know what the plan was. I didn't know if it was going to be like a series or what. And you kind of were just like, yeah, we're just probably like an hour and a half. Like, and I was just like, I, at the time it didn't even, I was just like, yeah, okay, we're just going to do it. Let's, let's, let's grind. And it's fun. It's a new challenge and it's it so different. Like when I'm editing it, you have to edit it different. Like it's not the same because the montages are slower. Like I want them slower for some reason. And I think like, even when we were editing this and I'm like, you know, looking over why it's first cut, I'm like, oh, like I have, to, we have to change it instead of a YouTube video. It's not, even though it's on YouTube, it has to be like completely different, which is the best part of the challenge. And like something like, well, oh, I'm actually like learning some new editing right now, yeah. which is, good because it's been a while. It's the rules have changed. It's like now knowing that you're not cutting for retention or making sure people get to the end of the video is, or delivering consistently. It's like, there's a different signal. You got to tell the viewers, hey, actually, this is a bit more premium, high content. And so I actually kind of want you guys to sit back and relax. How do you think you could tell audiences to sit back and actually enjoy this video? Well, we do have a trailer. Yeah. So yes. we are TikToks. releasing a trailer mm -hmm. and then we are ready to do like as much as we can to market it. But I actually think the reason I say it's a 10 out of 10 is because I, I don't even care. Like I just, I want to make it because I want to make it. Yeah. yeah. And that like financially or like really what's, I mean, the views, I guess, just for more people to see, more people to see it. Mm -hmm. But really like, I know my core audience will see it. And if they enjoy it, maybe they'll share it. If not, like whatever. But it's, it's kind of for me. You guys make these videos for you guys first, but then you just happen to distribute it on YouTube. And it's like, it's like, oh, I guess we can share it with everyone else. And then I do understand like that balance of if we do spend the entire bank account on every video, then like, of course, like, the whole the whole business does fall apart. And so like, yeah, part of it is like every now and again, okay, fine. Let's just make sure we don't spend as much money on this video. The way you're talking about this video is actually the content I want to see on YouTube. But And then assuming audiences are not going to watch this and this will be 10 out of 10, that concerns me because I want audiences to be excited for this. And so I do think the marketing, I do think the, uh, the TikToks that are hyping this up, I would even say if possible, do have a screener. Uh, as in like, Inv invite uh, some of your core audience in New York to come watch this in a cinema. That's a cool idea. Actually. Yeah, and then have them all then share it and tweet about it. And so this the signal that this is an important video for you that you're excited to share with your audiences. This then tells everyone this is going to be a premium video instead of just this video just popping on YouTube of kind of out of nowhere. Just making this event programming and then getting the people excited about this. And then if all of this works, this sends a signal out to everyone else that we can make these types of videos. And then especially if it's got that slower pace, that bit more informed decisions and, and telling people to sit back on their sofa and watch this on a television and telling people this is what we can do with YouTube. Because it's such a long video, I just think that people are going to watch it later. Yes. So I think it's going to be a slow growth. Yeah. I don't think it will stay at 10 out of 10. I think it will just start at 10 out of 10. Yeah. Based on just like being on YouTube for so long. Mm -hmm. But no, I actually do think there's a lot of potential to grow because I've seen other movies on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how long the video is. If it's good, and if it's like, you know, there, there's passion in there, I, I think it'll grow.